Cheers. Welcome to Culture Night. Where each week we drink fancy wine and watch movies that are in some way culturally significant. I'm Andrew. And I'm Sarah. And we are back for season three, episode three, Devil Threes. And again, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Pocket Cast. All the places. iHeartRadio, YouTube. We appreciate you coming back. Or if this is your first time, welcome. We're excited to have you. And can we jump right into podcast business? Let's do it. On the note of the podcast and YouTube, we just want to take a quick second to celebrate that we went over 100 followers on Instagram yesterday, and we are now mm-hmm. up to 122, I believe, at last check. All right. Going and viral. We, I know. Look out, world. Culture Night Pod's coming for you. <laughs> um, and we also hit 50 subscribers on YouTube. So we appreciate everybody for following along, and we're excited. For coming back each week. Yeah, and we're excited to see where this goes in the future. Mm-hmm. And the next 50 and 100 and 200 yeah. and 300 subscribers from now. And I guess, is it time to jump in what we're drinking? Yeah. What are we drinking tonight? Tonight, we're drinking the 2015 James Gang Reserve Primitivo from Tobin James Sellers in Paso Robles. Taking it back a little bit. I feel like we haven't had one from before like 2017 in a mm-hmm. while. Yeah. We were going through the old stash for... For a bit, but then I think we were kind of co- focusing like the Pinot Noirs for the film noir genre, and then mm-hmm. yeah, and then just trying to switch it up so we weren't drinking the same style mm-hmm. of wine every week. So, oh, we're supposed to talk about it before I drink it. Sorry. Yeah, getting like I just know it sounds lame. It's wine, a little bit of like grape on the nose, and it's like yeah, it's you're mm-hmm. drink, you're literally drinking grapes, but I get that. I also was getting earthy notes. It's not super mm-hmm. like. I know you said great, but like not like red fruit forward. Tastes pretty alcohol forward. Um, not super thick. Yes and yes. A little sour. Yeah, almost a little sour. Almost tastes watery. Might not have been like doing the best at keeping this uh, well yeah. conditioned for, for aging. but Yeah, because 2015 was in fact, what, eight years ago? No, not yesterday. Like it feels like. No, that was last year. <laughs> I mean, it tastes good though. Mm-hmm. A little bit, a little bit of a uh, like spice, mm-hmm. um, on the aftertaste. Yes. Yeah. A little bit of tingle, a lot of spice. Mm. We'll see how it goes good. as it uh, opens up. Yeah, we gotta um, get some air into it. Okay, and now it's time to go behind the screens, where each week we go behind the big screens of Hollywood and look into some aspect of film production or storytelling. Take it away. So this week we are looking into Todd Ao, which we saw in the opening credits for Oklahoma last week. And we were like, what is that? Um, I thought it was something similar to like Technicolor, which we had, you know, reviewed in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like two weeks ago or so for Behind the Screens or three three weeks ago. Um, it was for just two. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I think. Um, so you can go back and watch that episode if you want to hear more about that. Um, but it is different and i'll get to that in just a second but it was it was a technology created by mike todd hence the name in the 1950s makes sense um he made it to compete with cinerama so essentially cinerama was just super widescreen like panorama cinerama uh-huh. um, type, type thing um so it was um to compete with that but rather than having a setup where you had to have multiple cameras and like stitch that image together um, which is how they were originally creating these really widescreen um, movies. Uh, this was able to use one um, 70 millimeter film, one camera, one lens to do all of that and get a really wide angle look. Um, I I read into the actual production um, like technology and like how it actually works. It's very confusing. Um, I feel like that's how I felt with Technicolor. I think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna say how I think it is, and we'll have to watch more videos, or maybe hopefully someone in the comments or on Twitter or Instagram will correct me. Um, the way I kind of understood it is that they filmed it in a, I guess, more condensed, um, like squished image almost, and then as part of the production, they took the negative and made it wider onto the positive for the actual film thing. So it was like kind okay. of condensed, but then like when it was projected then onto the positive. It they were able to make it bigger wide thing yeah and i guess it's kind of similar to um that new feature on like macbooks where you've got like an object sitting in front of your camera and it can kind of simulate like a top-down view it's basically oh, taking yeah, that image yeah. and kind of like correcting it to and like stretching it out that way i guess something similar but but not exactly the same but that's kind of how i was thinking that it works in my mind um so 
regardless, it's it's essentially a really widescreen format using a, just a single camera and single lens. Um, so it's much more similar to like the IMAX format that we're familiar with today. Oh, okay. Than like the Technicolor, which is more like the coloring process and how they use like multiple layers and, and was able to convert that to color. Is that why it kind of looked weird? Um, so it looked weird because um, this was actually 30 frames per second. So the ah. first three movies, there have been you know, a couple dozen, maybe two dozen um, movies filmed in the Tadeo format. And the first three were filmed in 30 frames per second. So that's why it kind of gave us that uncanny, uncanny valley look because it was just the, for the frame rate was a little bit faster than what mm-hmm. we were used to, which made it look that much um, smoother. And I believe they originally did that so that um, with based on technology would kind of make it look a little smoother. Um, gotcha. So it was, it was more kind of like out of necessity. However, they only did that for the first three movies. And then after that, um, they switched over to 24 frames per second. Now, Mike Todd died in a plane crash in 1958. And 1958 is also the f- year that they switched from 30 to 24. So I don't know if he was kind of like a big proponent on like, we have to do this, we have to do this. Uh, or if they'd already decided, I don't know the exact timeline there of whether or not it was kind of like he was already switching or they switched after he was no longer like running the show. Mm-hmm. Um, what's super cool though, is the 30 frames per second, um, you know, obviously was not, and is not today the standard frame rate, you know, mm-hmm. much to MKB HD's like <laughs> chagrin. Um, it's, uh, it, I guess a lot of, film studios were set up to just only run films at 24 frames per second. So to get around that, they actually, for the film Oklahoma, they actually filmed every scene twice. They filmed it once in 30 frames per second with this um, Todd AO single camera format. And they also filmed it then again, immediately after each take with two cinemascope 35 millimeter cameras to get the same relative look. So depending on- All those dance numbers- depending on which version you're oh watching, you might be watching the 35 millimeter, 24 frames per second, or you might be watching the 70 millimeter, 30 frames per second. And we were watching the 30 frames per second version. So Yikes. I wonder if we, how it would have looked to us, the same movie watching it in the different frame rate, different, slightly different perspective, but also every take then is just that much different. Ooh, not, not that I want to sit down and watch mm-hmm. this movie again, but I'm intrigued mm-hmm. though. So, to, to give a little scroll through a mm-hmm. uh, CinemaScope version. And I wonder like, I wonder how, how much that was really annoying because I think that probably a lot of movies, even the dance numbers and big movies, they have to do multiple times, multiple takes, whatever. Um, that I wonder if this was just kind of like, we've already gotten it down. We know exactly how we want it. Now we're just going to do that exact same thing again and hopefully mm-hmm. they can replicate it once they've got that. I wonder how much it really added to the production time and effort and fatigue of the cast. Yeah, I don't know, but that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Oh God, I mean, I'm so tired now just thinking about it. Yikes! Mm-hmm. Um, and then finally, um, the technology is still around today, but I think the last movie they made uh, with this format was in 1992. Okay. Um, the company, like I said, is still around, but I don't think they're doing great uh, based on their timeline that they were showing Wikipedia. It looks like they are like in bankruptcy and bought mm-hmm. by someone else and whatever. The name is technically still around. Um, but some other notable movies that were filmed with this Tadeo format were Around the World in 80 Days, Cleopatra, Sound of Music, and Dr. Doolittle and Patton. And Patton. Mm-hmm. Oh, I figured you'd if I'd like that. I know how much you love uh, Sound oh, of Music. Oh, it's my favorite movie. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So like I said, the Tadeo thing was fascinating researching that. Sure. And I would love to watch a video more on the process because I was just reading about it. And mm-hmm. the person writing the Wikipedia page clearly was very passionate because they, they use phrases like anyone who actually held this in their hand could clearly see that like and i'm like this is written by someone who's like knows their yeah. technology <laughs> and i clearly do not it's very opinionated about it yeah very interesting yeah i kind of like how i watched the technicolor video i'm sorry i haven't actually shown you the one i watched i think seeing it and hearing it kind of helps you to understand a little bit more how that stuff works yeah. but i'm just impressed by anybody that worked in film or television before the digital age that was able to figure out mm-hmm. how to make all this stuff work. Cause it is wild to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it was kind of just physics nowadays. It's much more like technology and getting creative to kind of, you know, get the same effect. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that, I mean, it's, it's a lot of just like refracting light and then trying to like, you know, do that. I still, to this day, I have no idea how someone came up with like capturing images onto like film. Right. Like, that just still is like, like I said, Matt impressed. I don't understand. Absolutely crazy. Maybe one day we will. Yeah. 
We need to go to the community college and take like some photography 101 classes. Okay. I've been wanting to do that film. forever. Yeah. Oh my God. Let's do it together. <laughs> yeah. Date night. Let's go to, <laughs> go to college. We can pot about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and dad go back to college. Oh, geez. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so with that, we will jump into our slept on it. And um, we are talking about last week's movie, Oklahoma, some more continuation mm -hmm. of our Todd Ayo discussion. And does your rating change after sleeping on it? You rated it a 4.8 and I rated it a 3.8. Um. I could give it a five just because I um, have more of, appreciated, more of appreciation for the songs the more that I've kind of thought about it. We were just watching whatever that commercial was that had um, oh yeah the uh, actors from Scrubs on it and they were singing Oh, what, what a Beautiful, beautiful morning. morning or some sort of like remix or um, uh, changing the words to that. Um, so you kind of don't realize just how prevalent a lot of those songs and things are um, today. And then I do also just, um, I think I did enjoy the movie um, I think giving it like a, a five flat, I think, instead of a, up from a 4.8. Um, yeah, I could maybe move up to a four. Mm -hmm. I from, still, from, your 3 from a 3.8. I didn't love the plot. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't know. I mean, I knew some of the songs. So like, like I said last week, they were more of a nostalgia factor for me to childhood and singing them in chorus than mm -hmm. to the actual movie. Um, but the more I thought about it, I really did love some of the, like the comedy from Ado Annie and Aunt Eller. Mm -hmm. I thought they were the best characters, hands down. Everybody yeah. else was kind of boring so and predictable. Was pretty good. He was good too. Um, but yeah, eh, overall, mm -hmm. still not a favorite of mine. Yeah. I'm ready to move on. But before we move on, it's time to get some fun facts. Yes. We've been calling them deep dives, but they're really not that deep. Sometimes they're deep. Like the Tadeo is kind of, it, it was behind the screens, but it also was a kind of a deep dive on that. But yeah. Let's hear some uh, fun facts about. Oklahoma. Okay, so my first fun fact is that Gordon McRae, who is the actor who played Curly, did not have curly hair, proving to be a problem for someone whose character's name was Curly. Mm -hmm. So they apparently- I didn't think I ever looked at his hair. She's like, oh, I know, I didn't curly. either. I just assumed that was his name too. <laughs> but apparently hair and makeup like tried a bunch of stuff and he didn't like how it looked. So mm -hmm. his wife committed to hand like finger curling his hair every morning before shooting. So that is attributed mm -hmm. to his wife. Uh, my next fun fact is that this movie was, in fact, not shot in Ho Oklahoma. It was shot in mm -hmm. Arizona. Yeah. So, on but the, because because Oklahoma Oklahoma was too overpopulated mm -hmm. to find a place a location that was like sparse enough to film the movie. I find that hard to believe. I That's what I thought too. Places, but um, yeah, I did I did see that, and it was like not just in Arizona. It was like literally on the southern Mexican border. I never actually looked at the map. I it, just was yeah, like, way way down there. Dang. Which is crazy that so far from they could Oklahoma. find a place to make look enough like the plains of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. when, I mean, I just think of Arizona as just being miserably hot. Yeah. But. Must have filmed it like in a cool season or something like that. Yeah, must have. And on the note of seasons, in the song, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning, they talk about how the corn is as high as an elephant eye. That's one of the lines. Mm -hmm. But they were not filming it during corn season. So they didn't know what to do. And they actually reached out to the agricultural department at the University of Arizona mm -hmm. and said, we need corn, grow it for us. And they ended up planting corn stalks in individual containers and mm -hmm. just hoping with that they would grow. And they ended up getting corn stalks that were 16 feet high. And I believe it was Oscar Hammerstein mm -hmm. was, was quoted as saying, we got corn as high as an elephant on top of another elephant or an <laughs> elephant's eye on top of another elephant or something. Mm -hmm. Cause it ended up being a lot taller than they hoped for. But wow. um, yeah, filming out of corn season. So it wouldn't match the one song. That they talked about yeah. For that one line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So shout out to university of Arizona for mm -hmm. getting that corn to grow. And then we talked a lot last week about the two girls that kind of kept popping up mm -hmm. and all the songs, the two younger girls and, um, to me, they didn't really feel like they had a purpose, but they were actually characters created by the director, Fred Zinneman, and the choreographer, Agnes DeMille. DeMille, DeMille I don't Sounds know how to right. say it. Um, and they were supposed to just be in one song. Um, they were just supposed to be in the Kansas City song where they jump off the train and mm -hmm. they were supposed to be there, but they loved them so much and thought they were so funny that they ended up bringing them back in every musical number in the movie. And they actually ended up having more screen time than some of the like more main characters mm -hmm. because they were in all of the dance numbers. I, say, I don't remember them in that first train uh, number, but I remember them in more of them. And I still, did, did it say, did you look up to see how old they were? I did not look up to see how old they I, were. I could not tell if they were like 14 or like 38. Yeah. 
I'll have to, Mm -hmm. we'll have to add that in somewhere else. We can look that up next. But they, and then they didn't actually have character names, but they called them the goon girls. That's what they're credited as, as being the goon girls, because Mm -hmm. um, the actress who played Ado Annie was playing that character a lot more sultry than they had originally. They wanted her to be more of a comedic character. Mm -hmm. And these girls were a lot more comedic. They were bringing the comedic relief that she was not bringing from her sexy side. I thought she was pretty funny. I thought she was hilarious too. But to these girls, they Mm -hmm. were using more as comedic relief to her Mm -hmm. sultriness. Gotcha. Um, All right. And then last week we were talking about the cultural significance of this movie and we weren't really sure if it really impacted much. I mean, we saw that it was had some impact with the filming and the Tadeo Mm -hmm. stuff, but it actually had a bigger impact than we thought. It was the first Broadway musical in which every single song had a direct relation to the plot and was not Mm -hmm. there just for like musical interlude. So that was the first time for that. I couldn't remember if we talked about this last week or not after the show, but I did notice a big difference between this and Singing in the Rain, where Singing in the Rain seemed like it was a musical and that it was a movie with some musical numbers in it. Mm-hmm. And this felt like the this, the uh, songs actually drove the plot forward. Mm-hmm. For and sure. I, there's a huge difference between those, and it felt much less jarring and much easier to watch because you didn't feel like you were taking a break each time mm-hmm. that those songs came on. You felt like it was literally just part of the, the movie just being sung. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's something that I think, because that's how almost all musical are, musicals are these days, mm-hmm. it's you don't think about it when it is happening, when they are driving the plot forward or character development mm-hmm. or doing something for the actual story that it was probably pretty jarring last week. I was just so caught up in the um, actual storyline mm-hmm. and just soaking all the last week. I wasn't really paying close attention, but yeah. now that I think back on it, it yeah, definitely was a lot more like, let's sing. It's like singing in the rain. You could just taken out all the musical numbers and still would have been mm-hmm. a, you know, a great story. But mm-hmm. um, with uh, Oklahoma, you take all the music, uh, musical numbers out and you have like nothing left. They'd ride away in that story with the fringe on top of the end and you wouldn't have even no thought twice about it. it. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Um, and then my last fun fact is that the original name for the Broadway play was Away We Go, but due to the popularity of Oklahoma, the song, they renamed it Oklahoma. Mm. But never fear, Away We Go also had an exclamation mark at the end. So the exclamation mark is always there. I'm still a big fan of Farm Love. For the, for the name, but it's just me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> the more I thought about that this week, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's a good name for it. Mm-hmm. All right. So I think that wraps up everything I have for Oklahoma. Do you have anything else? I don't think so. Okay. Should we hop into tonight's movie? Sure. Tell us what we're watching. This week, we are watching Grease from 1978. Taking a little bit of a jump forward mm-hmm. in time. Uh, it is rated PG. Um, again, PG in 1978 meant something a little bit different. I think mm-hmm. there's a, a bit more of like some uh, some sexual tension that wouldn't fly in as many uh, PG movies today. Definitely. Um, but now let's hop back into the time machine and go back to 1978. Sorry. <laughs> it's really long. Is it well, no, it's, it's a really long oh. thing. <laughs> you just usually cut it? It's still going. Yeah, it's 20 more. It's still 20 <laughs> seconds to go. That's I just awesome. always cut it soon and I yeah. had the wrong volume up. Sorry. Our uh, Patreon subscribers can hear the whole sound of it. No, we don't have a Patreon. <laughs> uh, maybe someday. Uh, so yeah, welcome to 1978. The top three movies released um, are Grease, uh, grossing $153 million, National Lampoon's Animal House, grossing $141 million, and Jaws 2, grossing $102 million dollars almost 103 million um i believe i've seen all three of those now we'll get to this in a second uh, about about grease though there's an asterisk there um the top three songs released that year are shadow dancing by andy gibb night fever by the Bee Gees, and you light up my life by debbie boone don't think i know those songs i don't think i know any of those songs i mean i've heard of the Bee Gees, obviously yes. um the the top 10 or like the songs that I could see. I was like, oh yeah, like I've heard of a lot of these, but these yeah. ones I'm not as familiar with off the top of my head at least. I bet the next year there are some songs from Greece that were maybe on the- I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. Um, have you seen Greece before? I have seen it many, many times. I- Asterisk, continue. Yes, my asterisk is that I have seen it. and I believe I've seen every scene individually. I have never sat down and watched the entire movie straight through. So it's kind of weird for me where like sometimes I would think I've seen every scene and then like- five years later, someone would be watching it and be like, 
oh man, that's all the actors from, from Greece. Oh, this is the same movie. I just had never seen that one particular dance number before or seen. <laughs> so um, I'm very excited to actually get the full story mm-hmm. and put it all together because it's way out of order in my mind. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it many times, but I also have not seen it in recent times. I mean, I couldn't even tell you the last time I saw it. And mm-hmm. it was not, I mean, I've seen it many times, but it was more of that, oh, it's on TV or so-and-so is already watching this, mm-hmm. that I know the story, but I never really loved this movie. It was not one that I watched a gajillion times, so I don't know it super mm-hmm. well, but I'm really excited like we've mentioned in the past, to watch it with my adult lens and yeah. kind of, I think I'm going to take a lot more from it than whenever the last time I watched it was. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited to actually like get the, get the full story, but I, I do know like almost all of the songs too. So it'll be fun to kind of sing mm-hmm. along this one. Do you want to tell us what you know about it? No, I embarrass myself. I don't remember it as well as I think I do. <laughs> okay. I remember there's like some sort of race scene. In the end, they ride off in a flying car and some other stuff happens. Flying car. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. yeah let's I, watch Grease. Yeah. Grease. Cheers. Cheers. That was Grease. Mm-hmm. That was way more than I remembered. I thought I'd seen <laughs> all of it. I have seen... Uh- not as much as I thought. That's kind of what I was expecting that you would yeah. say. Just not that not that I mm-hmm. didn't trust you. I just imagined that it's hard to only see parts of it mm-hmm. and have seen every scene because yeah. there's a lot to this movie. I can't believe that I had not seen this whole movie to this point. It's crazy. Um, but before we get into that, let's start with the wine Hi. scale. So we're about to rate our wine. Um, it's a scale from zero to 10. 10 obviously being the best thing ever. However, the fact that these wines are all very good wines that we drink means the scale is heavily weighted so a lower score does not mean that it's a bad wine it's all relative to the wines that we drink because i didn't want this all condensed to like a everything between an eight and a ten um that being said i'm going to go first tonight i will rate this wine a 4.3 okay that makes me feel better i was gonna give it a five because i couldn't really put an exact score on it it was kind of like a middle of the road it wasn't bad it wasn't great. You were going to this one better it. than last week? I don't remember last week, so I feel like I can't. I feel like last week was pretty good. It was very I know. delightful, very you, enjoyable. You gave it like an 800, and I gave it a four. That mm-hmm. like, I know that you loved last week's. Both of them, the past two weeks have just been, they've been great. I mean, not great. They've been good. Mm-hmm. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe, okay, I'll give it a 4.8. It wasn't a full five. I don't remember last week's enough to I give it. I give like a 4.4. 4.4. Maybe. I just felt like this one didn't have like the the complexity um it didn't have like anything to really write home about and i think that is very much on us for having not aged the wine oh well like we we get these wines and they're like two to three years uh from when they were bottled and this one is what eight years old Mm -hmm. meaning we have not kept it very well and we have been better when we first got them we mm-hmm. would put them on our little wine, cute little wine cart that we have mm-hmm. in our kitchen that gets full f- sunlight. like 100% sun. Half like the day. <laughs> we were not good about it. Recently, we have mm-hmm. started to keep them in their boxes in our basement. In a, a far corner built into the ground basement. In a much m- more controlled environment yeah. than they were before. Mm-hmm. So this one being from 2015 was definitely in the before times. Mm-hmm. That I don't, I think that we didn't help it. But I also, it wasn't like terrible. It yeah. wasn't like yeah. completely it was turned wine. totally bad. Um, and I, I just think that, I mean, Primitivo, I don't know much about them. I just think that they are a, a very good, like I'm eating a, I, just I, I was see. the back, there's, there's like nothing. There's it's no like, information it's no about generic it. back on it. It's like, Classic. there's different things you can taste when you drink a wine. It's, it doesn't have actually anything related to the wine. I think of them as, and it's just because of the name, might just be because of the name. I think that it is like, a, I'm eating a juicy steak and I want a good wine and I don't want it to d- distract from the from the steak. I want to enjoy this to its fullest extent with something that complements it, but doesn't overtake it. And I think that's what it's good at. We're going to, I believe, insert clip from previous podcasts mm-hmm. where you have exactly said that Primitivo goes with a steak. Yeah. There is a clip out there and I'm going to find it. Insert here. We are drinking the 2013 Tobin James, James Gang Reserve Primitivo. I think I've had some Primitivos before. I can't really say too much about them, Um, but it just kind of sounds like a fancy thing. For some reason, I just associate it with like, that sounds like something I'd have with a steak. If you were eating a nice juicy steak, 
This would be a g- great wine to pair with it because it's not going to distract you from the steak. It's going to pair well with it. It's going to help you like seek out the flavors of that steak and not be like, oh, I'm, I'm getting like some some uh, strawberry and like earth, you know, from my steak. No, you're, you're getting that from the wine. Not much going on. It's good. Not too sour, not too bitter or anything like that. It's good wine. And I enjoy your steak. I mean, I can't argue with that. You've got it. So that being said, still with like the whatever score I gave it earlier, 4.3, 4. we're going 4.4, 4, final answer. Okay. I'll go 4.8 because I did like it better than last week. That's surprising to me. I really, really liked last week's. I know you did. And I came in with the shocker of a 4.4 last week, but I think I like this one better. But I also don't remember last week's at all. And to me, it's forgettable. So it's a 4.4. Throw it away. Throw it away. (laughs) You already hear her first, folks. Um, With that being said, let's move to the movie rating out of 10. And now you have to go first. I know, (laughs) which is stressing me out because I had not put one second of thought because I was so stressed about my wine score. (laughs) I will give this a six and a half. I'm going a 5.4. And that six and a half was with zero thought. And mm-hmm. I just said that number right now. Um, I mean, most of the time I, I think of the movie, like or the score as we're Me talking this, this time, time. I literally was re- remembering the wine while I was drinking it and the movie this time, like live. I'll, I'll give my thoughts on the yes. movie first. Um, I mean, it's a classic. I've seen it a lot. Mm-hmm. There were a lot more songs that I was like, Oh yeah these are more catchy. Like I remember having a moment where I loved this song or I loved mm-hmm. this song. Like I had a, a lot more in it for sure. of that memory to it. There's also a lot more to it than I remember. I knew that that was probably going to happen because it has been a very long time since I've watched this movie the whole way through. Um, I don't think the plot of this movie is like great. Like I feel like it was kind of hard to follow. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't, it, the timeline didn't feel very easy and to follow. And when we watch these, like we are watching them to like to follow them, not mm-hmm. just like have something on the background. We're like trying to like watch this. Like yeah, we're sitting down taking yeah. notes. And I, for a couple of times, had to be like, "What did happen? I, I, I really, I don't know why they did this or why mm-hmm. I switched to this." Um, okay, now give us your thoughts. Yeah, I just there are a couple catchy songs. I'll give it that. Um, obviously, I remember like the big hits of it. Everything else just seemed kind of weird. Um, didn't seem very like practical. Um, I don't know. I mean, rating it on my like, you know, quadrants of like, uh, did I enjoy the movie? Sure, it was okay. Would I rewatch the entire movie in its entirety? Obviously not. I've not seen it up to this point <laughs> in its entirety. Would I rewatch parts of it? Sure. I've obviously watched bits and pieces of it. Is it quotable? Not really quotable. Besides the the singing? songs are kind of that my like <laughs> best friend from college always loved to to quote. Um, I think this, like the, the songs are quotable. Songs. The actual yeah. movie is not super quotable. So, yeah. Okay, you. I will, I will say 6.2 because it did reaffirm that it's not like, I've not ever loved this movie the way mm-hmm. some people love this movie. The songs are catchy. I, li- I think I was surprised at how much more I liked it than I remembered, but I still don't love it. Yeah. And I, I think I give it the 6.2, giving it the like, it's such a pop culture classic sure. for a lot of people. And it, that'll come up in a little bit. Yes, okay. Move on. Um, Description. Tell us about this movie. Um, boy and girl meet at summer outside of school. End up meeting again at the same school. Uh, the guy acts too cool for school. I just was saying the word school. It kept rhyming. Kept rhyming. Um, the guy seems acts too cool for her. There's a lot of drama of like, does he like me? Is he too cool for me? Is he a jerk? Is he really nice? Is he sweet? Ends up that they end up together. Um, other high school drama ensues. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yep. That that sums it up. (laughs) Again, vaguer the better. Um, I'm going to, I didn't have this as as a note, but it's a thought of mine is this seems like the fantasy of like every high school boy who's like, comes back from like summer break. He's like, Oh man, I got this hot new girlfriend. You don't know her. She was a different school. Like she's, she's in, in Canada, but I met her at this like summer camp. She's so cool. We were, we were like dating all summer or something. The, like the lie that like every like stereotypical kid tells, it's like, it's like a, a meme at this point of like, you know, I've got this imaginary girlfriend. She goes to a different school. You don't know her. This is like the nightmare of like, Oh, she does go to this school. <laughs> However, she's very hot. So like, it's not like, is there anything to be like ashamed of? Be like, Oh man, like, you know, we got together at summer camp, but like, I do not want to talk to her. But like, 
I have no idea why he had any like reservations. She's very attractive. Obviously, all the guys are like fawning over her. I don't know why he had to act like he's like too cool for her. I mean, I think a lot of that is played out in the summer loving song is how mm -hmm. he is like, oh, like there was this girl, she was so hot, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And she, you can like, the way she sings it is like way more toned down of how he was telling it. Probably more realistic. Yeah. She was telling, yeah. she was telling what happened mm -hmm. and he was telling his version of the story. And then you see that when they see each other, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I'm like so cool. I have to like impress my friends because that's how I live my life. And I think that's just such a high school plot is like, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the story and really play it up one way. And then the reality is just not, I, not as told as it. I mean, I get it. And like from the Hollywood perspective, I've just never been anything but me. So it's hard for me to like really like relate to well, that. Yeah, I'm like, same. Oh yeah. I'm going to act like I'm too cool for this girl that I really liked. This is what Hollywood really well. says that we're supposed to do. Yeah. Television was like a net negative. I feel like for so many generations of like, this is yep. unrealistic. Yep. I feel like it's getting a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I think we're kind of being like, man, we've set a lot of people up yes. for failure. Let's there let's are, change that. There are a lot more realistic, healthy relationships going on TV nowadays. There's also some, some more things I have clearly on this movie in my notes. But like, yeah, I just, um, I felt like it was very much like started out as like the the real life nightmare of the meme of like, oh, met a girl at summer camp. You don't know her. She goes to a different school joke. I can see that. All right. Can I tell yes, the may, TV description you now? Read the TV description okay. Now. Continuing on with the movie description, according to our TV, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John star in this hit musical about a high school girl who is hopelessly devoted to a hip dragster. <laughs> That's all I got. Hip dragster makes it sound like he like dresses up in drag. I mean, I mean, I think they're going for drag racing, but I'm yeah. like, yeah. Having seen the movie, I know what they were going for. But also using like the actual actor's this, name, I feel like doesn't track with most of the descriptions I've read so far. This description was written by a millennial. Probably. Someone who didn't yeah, who didn't grow up in the time of for this. It. Not that we were either. But um But also this like this no, this isn't even a millennial. This Gen is like Z a Gen Z. Yeah, it's a Gen Z. Mm hmm Yikes. Actually the quotes around hopelessly devoted. Yeah, like to Max has tended to be Christ better with its descriptions. Mm-hmm. I'm let down. Yes. By the way, we watched this on Max. So if you have Max, you may also watch it on Max. Watch this and um, hopefully we've not given any spoilers. Also, this movie has been out since 1978. So if you've not seen this and, movie, and like this I is hadn't, by far more on you than it is on us. The most popular of the movies we've watched so far. Uh, I'd say Forrest Gump's pretty far up there. No, of the musicals. I'm of sorry. Musicals. I'm sorry. I'm going specific yes, season. Of the musicals, for sure. That I think most people have probably seen this. Yes. Except for you. Sorry. <laughs> All right, what's next? No comment. Um, was the movie what you expected? Yes and no. I mean, I had obviously seen a lot of the scenes. I thought I had seen all of them, but there's a lot more. Like, it seemed like I was watching a movie with a bunch of deleted scenes injected in it, but that were, like, the actual scenes. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously the whole general storyline, I 100% knew. Yeah. Boy, girl. Mm -hmm. Does he like me? Does he like me? Communication issue. Creates a lot of drama, end up together. That was like the rubric of like every love story for 40 years. That about sums it up right there. Mm -hmm. uh, How well did it age? Could it be made today? Um, no. as, as a time like period, like type thing, it was like, oh, this is taking place back in the. It's set in 1958. Yeah. Sure. Otherwise, absolutely not. There was so much going on of like um, the smoking at school and just the relationship and like just dropping out of school and like that's not i feel like as accepted today there's a lot more like rules and laws around so many different things um yes in that aspect but also like talking about teen pregnancy and uh, mm -hmm. i mean that not as much pretty, of the dropping out of school but i think like school is not where i fit in like maybe i want to try something else like i think some of that stuff was a little progressive for 1958 1978 mm-hmm I think I think it's a fifty fifty here. Yeah, some things like clearly did did not. Yeah, the fit. smoking and drink and like the the beer cans in the paper bags at on the school yeah. bleachers. I mean, they yeah. in the fifties could have bought beer at age eighteen, yeah. like they said most of them were. Um, but nowadays, for sure, if they're making like a more modern, like this takes place in the twenty twenties, like no, for sure, so yeah. much of it would be way different. And the uh, shop teacher um, being with them at the. Uh, 
shop, illegal racing. They're being a the, shop teacher at all. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> but like actually working on a, on a car uh, at a specialty school maybe, but um, also just condoning their street racing, hard pass, no. Mm-hmm. They, they would not Definitely be. not. Uh, next question is... Did they say the title of the movie? Does the title fit the movie? Did they say... They, they talk about Grease Lightning. Right. It's in that in that song, I think, is the extent of the mention mm-hmm. of Grease. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, all, obviously, all of them have, like, greased hair. And they, like... Um, the cars. Make and... a reference to it also in the title credits, but it's more introduced in the title of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, I don't think there was a clear, like, they're saying the title. Yeah, it was not the had. obvious thing that that question is that's, that's more what I'm looking yeah, for. That's the question. Um, does it fit the movie? Sure. Summer Lovin' also would be a great title for it. Yeah. Is that too cheesy? Is that too Oklahoma? No. Um, <laughs> trying to think of like other quotes, like Beauty School Dropout. No, not no. that's more the side show. That's, a, that's that. definitely yeah. a B-plot. Yeah. I think Grease is fine. I yeah. mean, it's, it kind of encompasses that era mm. of the 50s and, and the summer, cars and the summer hair. Summer also is more like the... The setup. The, yeah, the whole before the intro type thing. I think Greece is about the best title I can think of off the top of my head. So, sure, it fits it. Especially when you have that cool logo with the car, with Greece spelled mm-hmm. out within the car. Very artsy. <laughs> Very ahead of its time, 1978. Um, were there any actors that went on to do bigger things? Olivia Newton-John. Wait, who's this John Travolta guy? I don't think he did anything. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, RIP Olivia Newton-John, though. Um, she obviously... Went on to do a lot of things. John Travolta obviously has... I, I don't know how many things were before this or were after this. Yeah, I'm not sure where this fits in the timeline of like yeah. Saturday Night Fever. I, th- and I like feel like that Saturday stuff. Night Fever was before this, but a bunch of others clearly were... After. Well after this. He, um, he looked... And he, I don't think he had, but he looked like he had, like had plastic surgery in this, but he's clearly had a lot of plastic surgery since this. He doesn't look great. He like doesn't quite look human. Yeah, no fin- I think, no but shiny, I also but kind of think I've always felt that, that there's something about him that I just don't, Yeah, that doesn't track right in my brain. And like when he would launch no the offense. songs, the pitch of his voice was also like, didn't match what I looked at him and saw. It's like, he just seems like a crazy robot that can sing. Yeah. It's something about, it. I don't know, like just doesn't quite, it's the uncanny valley. Like does, you look at him and you're like, something just doesn't fit and, and it's messing with my mind. Right. Why do I watch I you agree. like be in a movie? I'll have further notes in further episodes of this season. Can't wait. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, what impact do you think this movie had on pop culture slash do you feel cultured after watching it? I mean, it was a phenomenon. It still is a phenomenon. I feel yeah. like there's still like, you know, theater productions of this to this mm-hmm. day. So many high schools do this every year. Which is interesting to me because I just like, how do you follow, like how much of this plot do you stick to? What do you cut out? Do you keep all of it? I don't know. The the props and the stage, people like must absolutely love like creating all of the, the sets oh, definitely. for all of this. Um, pop culture, like it's, so many of the songs are still like referenced today. Um, the main musical numbers of like Summer Lovin' and um, You're the One That I Want, like just. And I mean, Olivia Newton-John's like outfit at the end. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's such a iconic mm-hmm. look. Tell me about it. Stood. Yeah. yeah. Just so many iconic like scenes from this. Um, but I don't know how many of them are like replicated in movies or parody even. It just seems like it just is a standalone. Like, this is Grease. No one's going to mess with it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I know in One Tree Hill, one of the characters dresses like her. Oh man. Like as a Halloween costume. And like, I think it's like that kind of look of like, you're trying to, she was trying like Olivia Newton, John trying to impress. I was like, Oh, I'll just pull the Sandy from Greece look out Mm -hmm. and put that on. And I think it's, it's references like that power couple for sure. A hundred percent. I don't know how you mess with that with all black. Mm -hmm. They really would have fit into our film noir genre. (laughs) Guest, sure. guest stars, 1978. Can we go back in time in our <laughs> time machine? John, Meet us here. John yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Very, very intense outfits, and they pull it off very well. 100%. And, I mean, I don't know if any, like, remakes or anything of this. I mean, obviously, the there is a Grease 2. Productions. There's a Grease 2. But I, I feel like nowadays... Okay, so I kind of have some notes on this. If You there get was, to go first for notes anyways, so you can okay, kind of... So you can notes. bridge the gap. If there was a modern day remake of this, uh-huh. 
Um, oh, geez. So, well, I think <laughs> where Frenchie, is this going? <laughs> so Frenchie, and I think that nowadays it's like it's too late for this. I think Allison Hannigan, Lily yes. from How I Met Your Mother, yes. would have been an amazing Frenchie. Yes, like like, like ten to twenty, 20 years, years ago. twenty years she's, ago. It's a bit too far past that now. No offense to to Allison, she's amazing, but I think that I she, mean all the all the actors in this were like very old mm-hmm. that she could still play high schooler. It's like a cross between <laughs> probably. I mean, honestly, some of these people I think were like looked like they were in like forties or fifties. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. I don't know about you, but for Rizzo, I was getting some Miles Teller vibes. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I wanted to say while we were watching it. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you kept that in. I was like, I just there were so many I things. See it. Yeah, there's so many things where I'm like, I could see a remake of this where they don't quite keep it a hundred percent. They kind of switch some like roles, whatever. So like, I just felt so much Miles Teller in half of what she was doing that I'm like, I love it. If you told me that, that was his mother, I'd be like, oh, yep. Well, obviously. I love that. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, yes. Oh yeah, I definitely, I do agree though that like a modern day version of this would mm-hmm. be very cool with a lot more diversity mm-hmm. because America is diverse and we just like to pretend yeah. it's not. And a lot more of that, like uh, there would definitely be a gay guy in a as a pink lady, mm-hmm. 100%. Million and Miles and I, Teller could just like slip right and in. And I think if they made this like a good like 10 years ago, I could also see a JGL as John Travolta. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like he just kind of fits that baby face well, you said, So you said JGL, but my brain heard Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay, and that, but that, and, and I was like, you could make a case for it. either. Yeah. Depending on how you want to go with it, for sure. But also Zac Efron. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he, like, yeah. I mean, obviously he's my, like, true love of my life. No mm-hmm. offense. <laughs> Just kidding. You're my true love. But. I mean, Zac Efron, I think, would have absolutely knocked it out of the park. 100%. Like, this, again, I notes for a future episode. Sandy, though? Like, I could see it one direction being, like, we're, we're going with um, um, uh, Pitch Perfect. Anna Kendrick? Anna Kendrick. I say Anna. I was, it's the K. Oh, yeah. Anna Kendrick as her. Oh honestly, yeah, she honestly, could do Britney it. Britney Snow too. Yeah, mm, she. I think she would be more of like a um, Frenchie. Obviously, Alice, Allison Hannigan yeah. is a great one. Yeah, but I think Britney I Snow could play take. a good Frenchie mm-hmm. or um, Mar- Marty, the other the girl who had the yeah. um, guy in the Korean War and or the Marine, mm-hmm. um, who was uh, trying to hook up with the um, bandstand guy. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, just take the girls from Pitch Perfect and insert them as pink ladies, mm-hmm. and I think Bellas. <laughs> I think you'd be great. Honestly, Barton yeah. Bellas as the pink ladies. Mm-hmm. You heard it here first. <laughs> I'm yeah. shocked that and they didn't I do that because they were such a like, I mean, ladies of the '80s, like classic women's mm-hmm. hits. That I'm just shocked they didn't. Do I can't wait for that. AI to be advanced enough where I can just be like, make me a remake of this movie starring these people, and it just makes it for me because I would just love to see it. A lot of AI to me is unsettling, and I don't love it, mm-hmm. but I would be here for that. Yeah. I'm here for that. I think it would be better recast as this. Take this person, de-age them 10 years. Take this person, Love de-age that. them 25 years. Make this movie. Yeah, that's what I want to see. You heard it here first. One day, we'll get to do that. <laughs> I'll get to work on it. All right. Um, so you're into your notes now. Yes. Um, first off is that I never saw the intro. I thought I'd seen all the movie. I had no recollection of the intro. I thought the movie started with Summer Lovin'. I thought it was like, you know, a good minute into the movie. They started with the Summer Lovin' song. No, there was like the whole beach scene. They they actually met. I thought it was kind of like a, this happened off set. I never actually mentioned it. Um, I just the, loved it because you were like, I've definitely seen all of it, but just like not all at once. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I was like, I really don't think you've seen ever. Like, there's no way that you haven't sat down and watched the whole thing and you've actually seen it all. And like literally the first scene, you're like, I haven't seen this. This movie is what, like an hour, 40 minutes. I've seen like an hour pl- of it, but there's still a whole lot in that that I had not seen. Um, then the whole like cartoon intro that was like a schoolhouse rock video. It also gave me some, I was going to have a note of this, of Christmas vacation vibes. That was the next one, but it was much, I felt much more of a. The animation style was a lot more schoolhouse rock for sure. If you cross them and you're like 80% schoolhouse rock, 20% Christmas Mm -hmm. vacation, that's what you get. Yeah, that was, I think I had forgotten that. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I remember Mm -hmm. this now. But it, it gave me some weird Christmas vacation and schoolhouse rock for sure vibes. Uh, My next note, these high schoolers looked 35 at least. And they all were at least 30. 
Except John Travolta. He yeah, was in he his was, 20s. Yeah, he was 24 or something. Yeah, he looked younger. <laughs> but some of these guys, I'm looking at them and I'm like, I am 32 now. And I feel like I'm younger than these people look. And I think so much of that also, like, obviously it's a, it's a trend to cast like people in their 20s or even 30s as high schoolers in movies. That when I was actually like a high school senior and I'm like, I feel like I am an infant. Mm-hmm. And I blame it entirely on Hollywood where it's like, oh no, high school freshmen are 24 when you're a senior you're 36 <laughs> like it's it was unrealistic expectations for like how you're supposed to feel I'm like i've got one chest hair and i'm about to graduate next month these guys have a full freaking beard i mean i don't think there were many 30 year olds playing high schoolers Me- there were there a bunch were. in this one well <laughs> this being the exception i think by the time we were high schoolers the things that were high schoolers playing high or people playing high schoolers were mid twenties or younger. Like Mm -hmm. I think we kind of got a little, a little bit more realistic there, but there were my senior high school picture versus my high school senior picture. That's four years. It's, it's a big difference. Especially for high school boys. High school boys are infants. Mm -hmm. I kind of look exactly the same. Yeah. More or less. I got a few more wrinkles now, but like ageless 90% I look the same. I I, it's not super this this like Rizzo was 34 like super not realistic yeah as soon as she walked on screen I was like you are not in high school let me Wikipedia how old are you and what was jarring um Leo Craterface the guy from the rival whatever mm-hmm. racing gang scorpions thing. yeah he, he was like 50 oh, he, yeah. I believe was 31 he I does not look as old as we do Wikipedia um I mean obviously they've probably did some makeup to make his face look like that or maybe that's what he looked like he just looked way older than all of them i hope like, he didn't look like that i just can't imagine being like oh i'm in high school right now and this is what i look like it's just these guys look like they'd worked, they'd I mean, twice the like almost gone to college age. worked 100 years had a wife and a couple of kids and we're still 18 i mean like you think of it like these people are what you said 34 some of them rizzo was 34, 34. and these kids are playing high schoolers that are generally around age 17 so like they are twice the age. Like they could they could be seventeen, have a kid, and their kid could be acting the movie with them as like a realistic age of what they're supposed to be acting. Like that's just that's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I think hopefully we have drawn a line and being like let's not do this anymore. I that's... still feel like they do it. Yeah, it's it's. it's I haven't watched crazy. a lot of high school dramas lately, mm-hmm. but maybe we'll get into that one day and we'll see. That'd be a good season. High school dramas. High school dramas. Oh, <gasps> I'm here for it. High school musical. What? I don't know. All right, next. What's your next, next question? Note? Next note. They definitely recorded these songs in his studio. So as we talked about in Oklahoma, where they're walking and they're talking and like they're clearly like projecting and like not showing much crazy facial expression or dancing while they're singing because they are like actually seeing while they're recording the scene. And this one was the opposite. Like once they watched into a musical number, you could tell they cut audio, replaced it with a re- like studio recorded version. Mm-hmm. And it's it's very different. Um, but it's very much, it's like, oh, I'm just listening to the soundtrack while I'm watching this. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if you're not paying too much attention, it's not that crazy. But for me, it's fairly jarring when like the audio completely changes. I mean, I think I've seen a lot of musicals. Mm-hmm. I think I just expect that at this point, yeah. that it's not as weird to me. It was probably weird the first time I saw them, mm-hmm. but it's just like, oh yeah, they're just, oh, grease lightning, go grease. Like, uh, you know? and, and I imagine that like Oklahoma and those movies weren't trying to do it out of like realism. They were more trying to do it as like, it's hard to splice audio in post and get it to match exactly with the lips. I cannot Whereas imagine. Whereas you can like put on headphones and you can watch and you can sing and then you can try to get it to match almost exactly, take multiple takes later when there was like digital copies and able to. I mean, I know how hard post. it is sometimes to sync up the audio that we have in mm-hmm. this very minimal setup of us sitting on a couch yeah. that I can only imagine. Yeah, like 57 dancers and you're trying to get that yeah, all right. I can I can. Yeah. Good on you to whoever was doing that before digital days. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Miles Teller and Al Hamilton. again. Uh, my next note is about they, they were in high school and they're drinking a bunch of dessert wine and passing it around. My first thought was like, Ugh, like dessert wine. Sure. I'm sure there's some time and place for it. Some people like that. It felt so incredibly high school to be like, oh, we got the sweetest wine ever. We're going to pass this around and drink it. A hundred percent. I mean, even college to me was like, the pinkest wine you can mm-hmm. find. I want that. Pure sugar. That I I believe it, but I also internally was like, I think that's like a negative 10,000 on our mm-hmm. wine scale. Yeah. Whatever that was, was probably not great. At the same time though, I feel like dessert wines, well, 
they're generally in smaller bottles. They're like more expensive, but they are, I think, higher alcohol content. So if you're yes. in high school and you're trying to get drunk, you got a bottle of wine, you probably want some dessert wine to be like, it's sweet and it's strong. Yeah. High school times are just so tough times. Sense, but like, yeah, not Disney for flashbacks, me. Like no, musc- thank you. Muscadine grapes and all of that. So yikes. Um, the American Bandstand, I got a lot of flashbacks to the uh NBC. Well, nas- national, national bandstand. bandstand sorry um the american dreams movie or uh, not movie um tv show and i grew up watching that and it just makes me like when i go yep. back and watch that yep. we did not obviously grow up in the actual bandstand, bandstand times era but it seems really cool and i i very much appreciated that tv show as, as probably unrealistic as it was for sure i mean i did watch it with my mom and she did appreciate a lot of it mm-hmm. um this also makes me super excited for hairspray. So just like oh, tuck wait. in a couple more weeks. I wanted to watch it for a while. Oh so I can't God, wait I'm for so that. excited. Um, the Stay b- tuned. We're watching hairspray in a couple weeks. <laughs> the uh, singer at the at their bandstand dance mm-hmm. thing was Johnny Casino and the Gamblers, which Johnny Casino is a very cool name. But the and the Gamblers, <laughs> it's like I just it's coming back again. Flash back to the whole the like the and the bands that. I don't know if that's his, you know, I think you mentioned what Josie and the six. Oh, Daisy something. Jones and the six. Daisy Jones and the six. Um, like, I don't think many bands nowadays having the, like the blank and the blank. Hootie and the Blowfish is like the last one I really remember. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it probably died in the eighties, mm-hmm. but also Daisy Jones and the six is set in the, I don't know. It's I mean, not, it's, it's, it's not time, recent. Yeah, it's obviously. definitely a like past times obviously fictional story but um, can you mention like you're one of these guys and you're like oh what, what do you do well my dad's say he's the he's one of the gamblers from johnny casino and the gamblers well what does he do well they go to high schools and he plays while they they dance well, the, and he judges well, the 18 them 18 year olds dance yeah kind of weird kind of creepy job um yeah like it's one thing to be like oh you're on bandstand you're on the national televised show people come in they all you know relative like in a, in a range, but like all different ages, but to go be like, we're going to a high school and we're going to like rock out. It just seems kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, next is at that dance, the dancing versus modern times. Nowadays, dancing is like, we're grinding. The teachers are all like, you gotta, you gotta leave at least like, you know, f- two, three, maybe four yards between each person and like, get mm-hmm. it, get away. But everyone's like grinding and, and sweaty and like, yeah, but unpleasant dancing then seemed really fun. I wish that we had times like have these choreographed dance or like dance like all the different moves they had. They look they have a lot of fun. It seems really cool. Cool skill to have at least. I mean, so I have a note on this too, along the lines of the the bandstand. When and how do you learn those dances? And how do you know, oh, this song, we all have to dance like this? Mm-hmm. Or like um Danny was dancing with Sandy and then she just like disappears because mm-hmm. she's mad and what's her name? Cha-Cha comes in and like dances with him and they just know the dance and they can Have keep dancing move. together. Like, how do you, do you just know yeah. that? Is there something, is there like a time where you just learn this in your life? Now I don't people know. are like, oh yeah, dance to Charleston. And I'm like, how does anyone know what that is? Mm-hmm. Not let alone the whole school, I mean, but. I even, I mean, I took cotillion. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I only took it for like three years, but I don't remember any of it. And was that something that people did outside of school? Do you do that in school? Like, I, mean, I don't, I don't no, know. No texting or smartphones. So like, what do you do? You're sitting at home. You're like, well. But there's also no YouTube. Off. How do you sit and learn these dances? That's gotcha. true. Gotcha. You can't just like rewind what American Bandstand. Right? How do they learn? I need to know. I mean, Tell I me. you get the friends you together learn? and you're just like, we're going to practice this. We're going to create it. And we're just gonna the hand jive? Forward. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, don't know. I have I have questions. How do you learn these these? Group dances. I will say, like, as a high schooler, dancing and, like, grinding, it's, like, you're horny. It's, like, all you want to do. Like, I and it's easy. Grind. Everybody can just kind of bop to I the I just want to grind parts in someone else's parts. But, like. I hate it when you say it like that. But, like, going back, you're, like, we got this cool move. Like, we got a bunch of dances. Like, we're, like. It the cool. lifts. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wish I could do that. Seems really, really cool. You know what we're going to be doing in our free time. Not that we Pulling don't have time. Muscles, we, don't, we don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> we're not coordinated enough. Um, and the last thing I, that I had was that a lot of the dancing or not dancing, the singing numbers, um, reminded me, and I, I, I don't know why, but I got flashbacks to the Rocky Horror Picture Show where it's, it just seemed out of place where it's like, they're dancing, they're talking or not dancing, they're, like they're interacting like normal human beings. And suddenly it's like the audio is from a set 
it just felt very jarring to like break from that. I don't know if nowadays movies blend it more, but it seemed very jarring to be like, we're sitting there, scenes going on, scenes going on. Suddenly it's like studio audio right away. I think it's just a musical thing. Yeah, I get that, but it, I don't know. I felt it, especially with the way some of them sang. Um, it felt very reminiscent of Rocky Horror Picture Show. I will be interested to see if you continue to feel that way as we keep progressing mm-hmm. deeper into the like more progressive musicals. Yeah. Oh, I'm, to your notes I'm so excited for all the weeks we have to come. I'm so excited. <laughs> we have so many good musicals to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a ton of notes. Um, my first note is that it's set in 1958 per wikipedia so mm-hmm. just to give it an actual year and i do love i feel like we've like um singing in the rain was filmed in 52 and mm-hmm. set in 27 28 that like all of these movies that are filmed like 20 or 30 mm-hmm. years after i think it's such an interesting especially when you take on something of being like this one's filmed here takes place here and then later one is filmed here takes place at that same time mm-hmm. and just to know that like people working on this movie grew up in that time or like they actually know instead of like oh we're filming this in 2023 Mm -hmm. and it takes place in 1950 like how many people are alive and like functionally working on a film like this to Mm -hmm. like have a lot more of like those closer age gap jumps but it's also like when it's so close but so far like 20 years it's like you get so much romanticism of that time period and so much Mm -hmm. character like caricaturization that's that's a word a film made now about 2003 oh man the low-rise jeans the flip phones the glitter it's like you would get so much of like it's romanticizing that time but also it's making a caricature of it but also like you're really exaggerating bits of it when it's at that particular Mm -hmm. and i i feel like what i know of the 50s is greece Mm -hmm. which it was made in almost in almost the 80s Mm -hmm. that i agree is definitely a characterization of it but I still think it's always interesting to kind of pay attention to that. Yeah. I thought it was interesting that the principal of the school was a female. And I don't know if that is something, obviously, not having been around in the 50s or the 70s or she also like whatever. She's like a British accent. I think that's just how they talked. <laughs> that was the principal voice then? Yeah. That was just like the, like, mm-hmm. okay, children. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. But I, like, like were, the were there accent. high school female principals in the 50s? Seem fairly progressive, I guess. It it feels progressive to me, and again, I'm not like a diehard feminist, but like mm-hmm. I'm a like, oh look at that, that's kind of that's not something that I my brain expects. Well, I think to Hollywood see. is always well ahead of mm-hmm. its times for the portraying, but I don't know if that was true in the 50s or if that was a 19 late 1970s um, take on the 50s mm-hmm. or like a comedic choice, like oh yeah. maybe this will be funnier. I don't. I just thought that was interesting. Um, I pointed this out to you while we were watching, but when they had the pep rally, first of all, I think bonfires for high schoolers just feels like very dangerous. Mm-hmm. Just like there's a lot of ch- there's now a lot of kids. Have, to have the fire marshals there. The I mean, the it would definitely play. not happen now. Yeah. And it, I mean, I don't think we ever had bonfires when I was in high school. Did you have bonfires? I mean, I didn't really. We had pep rallies during school. We didn't. Yeah, pep rallies after, were during school. After school, it just it was not something that was ever in my mind of something mm-hmm. that would happen. But it just. There's a lot of kids. You don't know. Like, it's kind of risky. That seemed well, weird. Well, like, burning the mascot and all that sort yeah. of stuff. But on that note, in the background was the opposing team football player, like, mannequin on a noose, number one, aggressive. But then he was on fire. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry. What? I mean, nowadays, I think that it would, like, that's the whole, like, could it be made today? Like, that part wouldn't fly today. Definitely not. Um. But I could see it very much being a part of the, the times of like, oh, it, we're gonna like destroy that team. And, it fit the time, yeah. like, for, to fit the time for sure. But it just felt very aggressive, very aggressive. <laughs> just, especially the noose. Mm-hmm. Like maybe the fire, maybe him being on fire was fine, but yeah, hanging fine. him first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, it was just all kind of unsettling. But also, it was for like me. A, just the was even a, like a, a mascot they were. Bernie, it was, it just seemed like it a, was a, I think it was a football player, like a yeah. like white dummy but doll like were, like, with a like, jersey and a helmet on a noose like most on fire. T- high school, I think, would do like to, to the mascot, not necessarily to, like to an actual player painted yeah. as that. Yeah. It was a bit more aggressive. Yeah, it felt it just was unsettling mm-hmm. for me. I didn't like it. Uh, my next note is so they meet 
they're on the beach, they're in love. It's school. They're seeing summer loving. They had a blast. Mm. Happens and so fast. Right. And then uh, um, the preppy girl, Patty, comes in and she's like, cheerleaders, cheerleaders, cheerleaders are coming out soon, blah, blah, blah. Like, you should try mm. out. It'd be so great. And then all of a sudden, and so that's like, then she's seeing summer loving after that. And you're like, oh, so like cheerleader tryouts are probably like this week. And then she has mm-hmm. to try out and then she'll make it, blah, blah. And then like all of a sudden she's a cheerleader. How has she not seen Danny at school yet? I mean, it's California. The school's going to be bigger. Yeah, but I just, I don't know how she doesn't. I mean, she even says mm-hmm. to the pink ladies like, oh, his name was like Danny Zuko. And they're all like, oh, how has she not mentioned that? Or how has he, she not heard of if he is this I mean, big really like know the time stud? Scale. It might have been like a course of like two days. And they were like, oh, you're blonde. You're skinny. You're a cheerleader, and like the the tryouts weren't. Yeah, that hard. I'm just saying it, it felt like a weird timeline for me mm-hmm. to just all of a sudden next scene pep rally. She's already a cheerleader. She still hasn't seen him yet. Mm-hmm. Be friend. She was trying uh, to like run interference and like keep her away. We didn't see that. Deleted because she's a good friend. Unlike yeah. Rizzo, who's like, oh, Danny's over there. I mean, Rizzo seems like every friend from like actual friend from high school that's just messing with <laughs> you. Like, true. she's probably the most realistic yeah. character. <laughs> Yeah, everyone just kind of likes to room with everyone in high school. It's like, mm-hmm. um, so anyways, that that timeline was just a little weird for me. Uh, I'm going on record as saying, not one time ever at a sleepover in high school did I wear any of the things that the pink ladies were wearing in their sleepover. Like just just a shirt and underwear, no, or like a weird like nightgown. You guys wear like parkas or something. I mean, I wore like a t-shirt and boxers. I don't know. I think Basically I think were. her name was Jan, the girl with the short bangs. Mm-hmm. She was the most realistic. She was wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants. I think mm-hmm. that's like the most realistic uh, being like sleepover weird, attire weird. for me. I hate to like burst any bubble of what you mm-hmm. thought high school girl sleepovers were, but it was not that. And, yeah. It was not whatever <laughs> that was. Um, I mean, there was definitely the like, uh, you know, like giving each other a hard time and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But clothing wise, no. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when Sandy comes out of the bathroom and she's like, were you making fun of me? It's like, have you met high school girls? Yeah. Have you met high school boys? Yeah. It's just like, you're a high schooler, you're going to make fun of people. Yeah. It's just like how your friendships are. But like, yeah, it's just. My friends that I'm still friends with from high school mm-hmm. are are the basis of, our, basis of our friendship is making fun of each other. Yeah. It's just. And giving each other a time. Do, especially in that time where it's like, what else are you going to do? Sit mm-hmm. there and just like compliment each other all the time. Yeah. Be nice. What? Um, okay, my next note is back to Patty Simcox, the uh, preppy girl who comes in and she's like way over the top. She is, and he, and he will agree with me, she is Barbie. She's like the, as you said, the Toy Story. She is what they based the, the <laughs> Toy Story Barbie character off Mm -hmm. of of just like so positive and so smiley and just so happy Mm -hmm. and just hello welcome are you happy to be here hi i'm so and so maybe three and a half seconds around that person before i just like absolutely snapped yeah but yeah she seems like she is the literal human version of the like travel agent barbie from toy story 2 Mm -hmm. yeah and and then but every time you see her in the movie she has that same like plastered smile on her face and it is unsettling once you make that connection So look out for that. Watch Toy Story 2. She could play the real life Barbie if they ever made a movie about that today. Yes, even though this movie was made like 40 plus mm-hmm. years ago. I don't even know. Math's hard. It was made a long time ago. I was making a joke about the live action Barbie movie that they oh, just made. Yes. but Go see Barbie. We're probably going to see it at some point. Yeah, maybe we'll do a uh, podcast about it. Stay tuned. Okay, and then I my last note was the line dances and just like how you learn those line mm-hmm. dances i, I want to know like what when in your i mean there was no social media and like scrolling on your phone and doing nothing that we would waste our time doing now we'll have to ask our parents like when you were in high school that's what i'm you saying you guys just do endless line dances I, assignment for me tomorrow is yeah. hey mom who needs home ec i want to learn line dances uh-huh She's more practical i'm gonna go to a bunch of weddings in my life how often am I, am I going to make a tiramisu i don't know from scratch like i don't know that sounds pretty good <laughs> I would eat one some right now. But I think the line dance would also be a much more impressive skill. It would definitely be. I mean, way more impressive than what um, Cupid Shuffle and Cha Cha Slide mm-hmm. and the Wobble. I mean, I, I will get down with the Wobble every time. 100%. But also, if there was a much more elaborate like dance like that. Or would, anything where you like, I like jumped into your arms and you swung me around. I'd be mm-hmm. super into that. Until we like threw up. But yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> or you drop me. <laughs> 
I don't know. I just, I am, we are going to reach out to our family that are Mm -hmm. older than us. 50s plus. Yeah. And uh, see how realistic those line dances Mm -hmm. when they learned them, we're going to get a little bit of, our parents are going to be like, oh, of course, you know, the whole thing of real life backstories for that exact same line dance song or crazy elaborate dance number. And we're going to be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) I can't wait to tune in (laughs) next week to hear what we have to share. So that's all I have on Greece. Yeah. Else? We'll uh, deep dive it this week. I don't know specifically what things we have to deep dive on, but I think it'll mostly be just like fun facts and yeah. behind the scenes info. But stay tuned to see what we come up with for next week, mm-hmm. and stay tuned to see what musical we come up with next week. I'm so excited. She's very excited. I'm so excited. I've been like, I feel like part of the premise of this podcast for me mm-hmm. was watching this movie. Yeah, I have seen it before. I got a very vivid memory of having watched this movie. No spoilers. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't even talk about it. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's it for season three, episode three. And we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.